What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, and this is my honest review for Flintlock The Siege of Dawn. So, this game is good, but not fantastic. As of the recording of this video, I have played around 20 hours of the game itself. I beat every boss, I've explored every zone, I maxed out the skill trees, and I've done a decent amount of side quests. But even during all that time, I never felt truly blown away. This is a game that feels so low budget that at times it kind of feels a bit unpolished. But let me break down the goods and the bads. Hi, hope you're having a good day. If you could please give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. So we're going to look at this in three separate sections. Let's talk about the story. Let's talk about the gameplay. And finally, the rather odd upgrade system. But first and foremost, what is this? So Flintlock The Siege of Dawn is a Souls-like. By That means that it's like a game that's sort of in the style of Bloodborne or something like Elden Ring and stuff like that. It's a game with big bosses that have multiple phases and a lot of very difficult encounters to get to them. But this is trying to be a lot more approachable than your standard Souls-like. This does have an optional easy mode. It does have a much more straightforward story, and in my opinion, some actually decent characters. So we're playing as this person called Nor. The world had a terrible tragedy happen about 10 years ago. The land of the dead and the land of the living, the barrier between them was broken a decade ago. So now the forces of death are literally sweeping across the land of dawn. Multiple gods have been unleashed and now they're actually just wreaking havoc and they have this huge army of like zombies and weird supernatural entities that are killing pretty much everybody. So Nor, she decides that she's going to fight back. But here's what's extra cool about this. This takes place kind of like in an 1800s era. So while people speak modern English, they're still fighting with like axes and still using gunpowder rifles and stuff like that to actually use combat. There's trench warfare and still cool ruins of ancient Egypt standing and people living in them and stuff like that. I think the art, the plot, the writing, I, I do enjoy that. Where this begins to fall apart is in the combat and honestly in the enemy design. So let's break down how everything plays and why we have our own set of magical abilities. So Nor at the beginning of the game encounters a tiny god, a mysterious entity called Inki, and it's like a little fox demon thing. Well, it decides to bless you with the ability to fight back. Now, the motto of this game is kill all gods. You're just trying to murder all these demonic entities and push them back to the lands of the dead. Now, doing this is now possible because of the blessing of Enki. He gives you the ability to actually double jump to fly to some degree, to actually, of course, revive when you get killed, and most importantly, the ability to curse. So whenever you're in fights, you can do three separate things. You can punch with your axe, you can shoot people with your guns, and there is different styles of ranged and close range guns, and finally, you can curse. So there's a system called witherings where you can actually tap people again and again and again to slowly sap their soul. So think of it as like somebody that's big and armored. They're completely impenetrable to my axe no matter how much I upgrade it. So now I'm able to actually pull out their energy and eventually stun them and rip their armor off. Now this is an interesting system because it's cool that when you're fighting people, it has this stagger buildup where you're constantly trying to wear down enemies and then eventually expose their weak points and chop them up. 
I do also find it interesting that you can't just use your guns to snipe weaker enemies. And also, there is this counter-attack system. So when you're fighting people, you can, of course, dodge roll or just parry them, but you can also shoot them in the freaking face. So you have like a little pistol that's like your quick strike button. It only has a couple bullets, but as you fight, it slowly recharges. If someone is doing an unblockable attack, they'll have this little like red symbol show up on their character while you're locked onto them. If you can't dodge it, you can just shoot them and it breaks their attack. They won't do that attack animation because of course they're currently eating lead. This is a cool system. My problem is the fact that this game is just the same type of enemies over and over and over again. There's like basic zombies. There's people that have very limited range attacks. There's dudes in armor. And then there's like two or three weird guys, you know, like a scorpion that's cursed or, oh, look, there's like a gooey thing that self-destructs. Every enemy in this game is so uninspired. And to me, honestly, this is by far the worst part of the entire game is because I feel like the art style itself, these beautiful environments, some of these breathtaking views, the areas we get to actually plunder for cool loot, the side quests that take us into like strip mines filled with the undead and stuff like that. There are moments in this game that are actually so encouraging about what the studio could do next, but then every enemy is just so boring. Like, oh, it's a zombie, but now he's got crystals in his face. Or, oh, it's a zombie, but he's got some ivy on him. Or, oh, there's the exact same zombie model for the 500th time, except this time now he's got some cool extra ability where he can take two hits instead of three. I don't know, man. It's such a strange move to make a game that has infinite potential because we're actually fighting gods. The god boss fights are cool, but like their minions, I wish that each of the territories had different monsters. Give us things that actually feel inspired by the mythology instead of just dudes in suits. Now to try and make this not feel so stale, there is the reputation system. So during a lot of these fights, you probably noticed that on the left side of the screen, there's this number that ticks up. So think of it as like if you're playing Dark Souls, you know, when you kill stuff, you get those souls can spend them to get upgrades or skills or whatever like that. Well, this works like that, but essentially this has the ability to multiply the set of souls you have by doing consecutive attacks back to back to back, killing enemies without ever being touched, you get a big bonus. So what's interesting about this is it not only encourages you to be extra vigilant, but it rewards you if you want to take the risk. Like if you kill five enemies in a row without being touched, you may have a multiplier of like 83%. It's like, okay, well, if I cash this in now, because you could just hold the left on the d-pad whenever you want and you'll you'll register those souls it's like okay do i want to keep up in the ante or play it safe i think that's an interesting idea but honestly even this feels so uninspired because a lot of the skill tree stuff just doesn't feel great a lot of the upgrades feel rather irrelevant maybe it's just because i just finished playing elden rings dlc but this felt so incredibly easy for like 99% of the game. Some of the boss fights were tough, but it just feels so irrelevant. Like it doesn't matter if I unlock a new ability to stagger super punch or shoot lightning out of my eyes, or now I'm able to curse people even easier and stuff like that. Like it just feels easier and easier and easier. Now, if you choose to explore the map very thoroughly, like I did, you could find stuff like raw materials, wood and ore and all sorts of power up stuff that makes it where, hey, now I can go back to camp and my buddy Boz will actually let me upgrade the gear I want. But even stuff like this, it feels so unneeded. And personally, one of my biggest gripes when I'm playing a game that has like RPG systems is when they don't feel rewarding. I never felt like I was getting stronger or if I was, it was just so tiny and incremental. Like, oh, now I do 1% more damage. Oh, I've got 2% more defense and stuff like that. It, it never felt as good as I think they were trying to do. And that does kind of suck. Now, when you're exploring these areas, 
you can fly. So you can like activate these skull things and it'll let you cling on to these like flying points up in the sky. And it's like, it's, it's not super in depth, but it is cool occasionally to be flying around a map and find some like secret hidden point by going super far out of bounds. It's of course visually impressive, but additionally, I think it's just kind of neat when you go to a spot to find some like hidden item and stuff. Like I like the fact that this map feels so vertical, so inside out. Like one of the best parts of Dark Souls games is unlocking a shortcut or finding some weird hidden item behind a fake wall and stuff like that. Flintlock is able to do that. It does actually feel like a game that wants you to be able to go and feel rewarded for taking the wrong path. But at the end of the day, none of this just feels good to play. It all feels a little bit floaty, a little bit messy, a, a little bit unpolished, and quite frankly, not particularly fun. Even after having finished every boss, every area, and a lot of the side quests, I liked the plot. I liked the music, I liked the acting, and I like the little moments. Times where, like, if you just sit there for a bit, Norm will start to hum some, like, creepy battle music. Enki talking to you in a lot of these cutscenes and slowly revealing his origins, his land as a god, and stuff like that. Those moments absolutely work, but when I'm having the 50th battle in the row, cleansing another town of another batch of the exact same undead horde, after a bit, I'll be honest, there were times where I just muted the game, put on a podcast, and grinded to get past the parts that to me were painfully stale. This game is not fantastic. It's not the worst game I've ever played, but when it comes to Souls likes, you might as well play Lies of P or something like Another Crab's Treasure. There's other stuff in this genre that is more inspired and more inspiring. I don't even know what to give this as a number. I guess if we have to put a number on it, I would give it like a 6.5 or like a 7 out of 10. It's good, it's not terrible, but it's also pretty dang forgettable. This is $40 and it is on Game Pass, so if it strikes your fancy... Definitely give it an install. I don't regret playing it, but I hoped for more. Well, what do you guys think about it? Are you excited for Flintlock, The Siege of Dawn? Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to keep dreaming. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.